All right. Hi, everyone. I think we're we're going to get started today. So welcome to our Friday Discover EE or Discovery session. So I'm Natalie Irwin, the Director of Stakeholder Engagement here at Efficiency Canada. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Friday after a short week. I hope everyone has some exciting weekend plans this weekend that involve getting outside and getting some fresh air while staying socially distant still. Uh, and before we get started, I'm going to quickly go over our webinar format for those of you that are new. Uh, our guest speakers from Think Well Shift will present for approximately 20 minutes before we open up the floor to questions and a general community discussion for approximately 20 minutes as well. Um, if you've attended before, you know that we end pretty promptly at 1245 Eastern Time so that everyone can uh, get back to enjoying their, their afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you are. Um, and a reminder that during the discussion period, there are two ways to ask questions. One is you can uh, raise your hand, and then um, our guest speaker who's hosting, Kelsey, you're just going to have to uh, um, show um, unmute you so that you can ask your question. Or we can um, type in the Q&A box, which is found at the bottom of your screen. And you can type in there, and then I can uh, read your question out loud to everyone for you. Uh, if you want to ask, um, you can vote on people's questions by just uh, giving them a thumbs up so that they move up to the top of the list. Or if you have an additional question, you can actually comment on someone else's comment or question as well. Um, the only role that we have for everyone is the same one we have for our presenters, and that's not that uh, no sales pitches, please. <laughs> uh, so let's get started. It is my pleasure to introduce to you our guest speakers that are joining us from Halifax, Nova Scotia today, uh, Liam and Kelsey from Think Well Shift. Their team runs Green Schools Nova Scotia, a program that provides energy efficiency and environmental education to over 30,000 uh, P to 12 students annually, which I know is at least 50% of the schools in the province and probably more at this point. Uh, so welcome Liam and Kelsey. Awesome. Thanks for having us, Natalie. And uh, thanks for the invitation to speak. Uh, I've really enjoyed these webinar series that you guys have put together at Efficiency Canada. Um, I find they're a great way to keep in touch with what's going on nationally and really have an idea of what other projects are happening across the nation. So hi folks. Uh, today we're going to be sharing our story of how Thinkwell Shift has helped Efficiency Nova Scotia uh, work to adopt the, adapt the delivery of their Green Schools Nova Scotia program so that we can continue to support teachers and students over the past few months. Uh, my name is Liam Cook and I'm Director of Business Development with Thinkwell Shift. I'm also joined by Kelsey Brazil, our Program Manager for the Green Schools Nova Scotia program. So who is Thinkwell Shift? We are a Nova Scotia based resource conservation company with a focus on helping people make good choices. So we do this primarily through customer engagement uh, that are tailored for our audience using our behavior change framework. Our engagements can take place at the home, at a business, in the community, pretty much anywhere really, but they focus on understanding, engaging, and then guiding our customer's journey. So in this case, that journey is energy efficiency. So this is a photo of of the efficient product installation service that we also deliver on behalf of Efficiency Nova Scotia. We work with clients to support other messages as well, such as waste diversion, uh, investment in renewable energy, and adoption of beneficial electrification, such as getting people into electric vehicles. But consistently, time after time, one of our favorite programs to deliver is the Green Schools program on behalf of Efficiency Nova Scotia. So at a high level, the Green Schools Nova Scotia program engages grade primary to 12 students on a variety of environmental topics through inquiry-based learning. Because the programs are supported uh, with demand-side management funding and provincial government funding, all of the topics that we speak to get tied back to energy conservation and efficiency. The resources that we have are linked to provincial curriculum and support classroom learning outcomes. The engagements are delivered in both official languages, and uh, this year we've been able to surpass over 80% of all private and public schools across the province. So a little bit further than that 50%, Natalie. Uh, one of the great things that we love about this project is our partnership and collaboration with Efficiency Nova Scotia. They're a super strong partner that's really helped us push uh, the boundaries of this program and bring some innovation to light. 
So this is a series of posters that come from an admission event uh, that we hosted in 2019. We ran two events uh, across the province, bringing students from uh, different regions of the province together to envision what their net zero energy future could look like for Nova Scotia. That's just one of the innovative ways that we're able to adapt this program, get students uh, learning with mentors and connected to the industry. Um, but it's really demonstrates that innovation, that efficiency allows us to bring and adapt and work on um, to find new ways of delivering the same messaging through um, the Green Schools platform. So with that set up, uh, what I'm going to do is hand it off to Kelsey Brazil. She's going to talk to you a bit about how we've transitioned the Green Schools program during a pandemic and uh, tell that story of what our engagements now look like. Yeah, thanks, Liam. So hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming. So today I'm going to cover um, typically what type of engagements Green Schools Nova Scotia delivers and then how we've um, adapted during this time of school closures. So Green Schools Nova Scotia typically offers two types of engagements, in-person engagements and virtual engagements. So I'll start off with the in-person engagements. So this is when our engagement officers are actually in the schools. Um, so an in-person engagement can look like us meeting one class. It can look like meeting multiple classes at once, an assembly, perhaps meeting with a green team. We offer uh, engagements for all grade levels, both in English and French. So our goal really is just to serve the school the best way that we can. So we have five engagement officers that are in the field that visit over 350 schools in our province. And just like Liam said, all um, of our presentations are supported by Efficiency Nova Scotia and they're, they're curriculum linked presentations fun, with fun hands-on activities. So it sort of breaks down into three areas. One being the efficiency um, presentation, which is really a facilitated discussion around what is energy, where does it come from, why should we waste less of it? And then of course, how can we do that? Once we've had that presentation, we go into more of an exploratory learning. So this looks different based on what grade you're, you're working with. So let's take grade six for example. If I'm meeting with a grade six class, our engagement officer would do an activity where they get all sorts of fun, common household items. They investigate what do, what do I think uses the least amount of energy all the way to what uses the most. Um, then with as a class, they organize that. Then we give them energy meters and they have the opportunity to actually check their work and measure how much energy does everything use. So that's when they're starting to see the difference between LEDs and incandescent lights and the big jaw droppers when they uh, plug in the hairdryer and they see that it's over a thousand watts. Um, so then we go into the third section, which is around brainstorming solutions and coming up with um, a commitment. So we really want all students leaving the engagement, knowing that they can take an action that would actually um, help them be more energy efficient. So this is in line with um, our messaging that you can start being energy efficient today. So it doesn't matter if it's a little change or a big change, you can start where you are. And uh, every energy efficiency behavior change will help to protect our earth. This is also our opportunity to link to other Efficiency Nova Scotia programs where students can go home and, and really practice that, those energy efficiency behaviors. So that's in-person engagements. The other type of engagement we do are called virtual engagements. So this is something we started to do in 2016 uh, in order to reach more remote communities, but also to increase the the number of potential engagements we could give to schools. So a virtual engagement looks like a Google Meet with perhaps one classroom, or it could be multiple classrooms joining into the same call. Uh, they're for all grade levels, and we also offer them in French and English. So these engagements run a little shorter. They're about 30 minutes long. Uh, it's that 10 minute facilitated discussion around energy. Then it's an interactive game or activity that could be a craft or a popular one is energy jeopardy or a drawing activity, something hands-on. And then the students still, we really hit home at the end with that commitment, that pledge of what can I do uh, to be more energy efficient today and help protect my earth. So those, that's how our virtual engagements uh, run. 
So those are the two, typically the two type of uh, engagements that we deliver uh, here at Green Schools Nova Scotia. Uh, of course, this year has not unfolded uh, as most school years have, so it's been a little different. And that was actually right from the get-go. So September um, hit and we had a peak in demand due to the increase in climate action initiatives in our province. So our response to that was uh, providing more of a webinar style series for schools where students from other schools could meet together, learn from one another, um, whether it's Yarmouth and Cape Breton, so all across the province. And it was our best way to engage as many students in classes as we could with the growing demand uh, for environmental education. So we, we stepped in uh, to that arena, highlighting energy efficiency as a solution. So fast forward into March, we hit March break, and that's also when we heard that school, schools would be closed for about three weeks. So that's when Efficiency Nova Scotia and Green Schools decided to pivot Green Schools to uh, deliver at-home webinars. So this was our response to COVID-19, and it was providing the same type of webinars that we had already been providing, but this time connecting with students at home with their parents safely while our uh, folks were also working safely at home. This was also the window of time when teachers were off for those three weeks and trying to brainstorm how to transition to e-learning. So Green Schools took a leadership role in that as well, where we already had that network of teachers and we started hosting how-to sessions. And this was uh, sessions with teachers where we could teach them these types of platforms to make it easier for them to reunite with their students. All of that led into the April to June sort of phase, which is where we're now, where we are now. And that's 100% virtual programming. So right now we are offering both at-home webinars and classroom webinars for uh, teachers and students. I'll go into a little bit more detail about that. So this here is a screenshot of our booking page. So this is what the team uh, put together when we had that three week period where we were only delivering at home webinars. So this was a way for us to build a registration um, phase. See that I have a question here. Maybe that's for later, I don't know. <laughs> um, it was our way to uh, build a registration model, uh, organize the logistics of at-home webinars, and really it was a way for us to reach out to parents where historically green schools had a network of teachers, so we sort of had to rebuild our network in that way. So parents would simply visit this website, register for the webinar that um, made the most sense for their, their student at home, and then we would be in touch with a link to Google Meet, and the engagement officer would then conduct a test call to make sure that the technology was working well. And of course, go through the guidelines of what this call would even entail and the safety measures that we're taking to make sure the students felt safe and comfortable during their call. This here is Piper. Piper was one of our earliest attendees of um, an at-home webinar. So here she is attending a story time webinar which is what we were offering for P to two students at the beginning. Um, so she joined right from bed eating her breakfast. Uh, and this, uh, this was where the engagement officer would read a book around energy efficiency, and then they would discuss what they learned together. So we quickly realized that the at-home webinars were, were gonna be a safe and educational avenue for students. But we also realized that it was reaching a need that we didn't realize where students really wanted to connect with their friends, their classmates, even family from across the province. And this was a way they could do it safely from, well, in this case, their bed, or in other cases, their kitchen table, their living room. So Piper's mom actually works for Efficiency Nova Scotia. And she said, hours later, when my husband returned from home, he went to turn on the light on, in the room and the curtains were open. Piper immediately said, dad, you don't need that light on. The curtains are open. We have natural light. And she added, Piper's only five, so it was pretty neat that this information had such an impact on her in such a short period of time. And we had many, many stories like Piper's um, come through once we started the at-home webinars. This here 
is a photo of one of the classroom webinars that we did. So this was post the three week closure. We had already done some how to sessions with some teachers to help transition them online. And this was actually on Earth Day. So it was a well attended webinar. Um, actually on Earth Day, we reached over 450 students in a single day. And in this call alone, we reached uh, 50 grade 10 to 12 students um, for this Earth Day. So you can see how it worked where the students would uh, join in individually from their homes with their teachers. They would mute themselves and the presenter or our engagement officer would deliver their engagement with their slides and their videos to play. And then you can see on the side there, they're using the chat function to actually uh, be part of the discussion or they could unmute themselves to ask their question or answer their questions. So that's how the classroom webinars have been rolling out. So we put together this little graph here because it actually tells the story quite well. So March 23rd marked the Monday where, where students were expecting to come back from uh, March break, which of course did not happen. That was when the three week closure was announced. So for the following three weeks, we delivered those at home webinars. So you can see from the first three weeks, we were delivering those types of webinars. Uh, come April 6, that's when we introduced the how to sessions. So that's when the teachers could connect with us just like this. And we would go through all the different features of Google Meet, answer any questions. We even gave them homework where they had to try to book their own call and test call with us, really trying to make that transition as easy as we could. And then come into the week of April uh, 13th, that's when we started piloting those classroom webinars, which you just saw how, how it looked. Um, and then we reached April 20th, which was Earth Week, which you can see the spike there. So that's when uh, a lot of teachers had really reunited with their students and we started to see more attendance of classroom webinars. So even still now, we're offering all three types of sessions, um, but you can see the transition happen where the classroom webinars have become quite popular and the at-home webinars are, are um, starting to, to, to slow down. So that's what that looks like. So to date, we have delivered 365 webinars um, from the time of the start to the pivot to today, although there was one while I was doing this presentation. So it might be 366. So if we look at this graph here, it's showing our student reach. So uh, right from the get go, we reached eight, uh, 83 students in week one, uh, which was really like really exciting for us because we wanted to make sure that we were able to help students and parents while they were at home. And so it was fantastic to meet with those students. Uh, as you uh, look through in week four, that's when we introduced the classroom webinars and the how-to sessions. And then that spike there is uh, Earth Week. And then it was sort of a steady climb after that once we had teachers and students and classes involved. Uh, so to date, we have reached 2,900 students. Uh, during this, this time of school closures and social distancing. So there's a couple things I wanted to say. So first off, I wanted to thank my team and also Efficiency Nova Scotia for being so solutions driven. I think that that's what's made this pivot possible. Um, and it's been awesome that we've been able to keep on our full-time hours for the entire program team. Uh, we're very grateful that we were able to pivot and offer environmental education to students during this time. Um, and this is us being very happy about it. So I wanted to thank you on behalf of myself, Liam, and our whole team for showing up and wanting to learn about our project. And we are happy to answer any of your questions if you have any. So thank you so much, Kelsey and Liam. That was a great, and I'm glad to hear that you were able to keep on your entire team. It's always a nice story to hear these days. <laughs> um, I have a few questions here. Just a reminder, if you want to raise your hand, then Kelsey can um, unmute you and you can chat, or um, you can type your question in the Q&A box that's found at the bottom of your uh, Zoom chat box there. Uh, first question is uh, from Sharon Body is, do you think that engaging kids directly in their own homes will have or has already had the greater impact because parents may also hear the message at the same time and our kids can show real examples? 
Um, yeah, that's something that we realized from the get-go that we had quite a unique opportunity that students were in their homes. Um, so we developed a scavenger hunt. And so they actually have the opportunity to run around the home and uh, find certain energy efficiency things that they can do at home, like stop a leaky tap or turn off lights that aren't being used. Uh, we're also hearing a lot of stories where parents are piping in and saying, oh, I didn't know that, or, um, or trying to answer the questions for the kids and the kids going, this isn't your call. So th there definitely is a different energy with this, having been in the home and, and it's been successful in that way. Do you find that there's a difference between um, like the younger kids or kids that you guys you go all the way up to P12 and the messaging and the things that they're, they're learning and or that they're taking home and, and a follow-up? Do you think that messaging is getting to their parents or homeowners, I guess, um, more so with the younger kids or older kids or the same? The messaging is different. So um, with the younger kids, it's always what can we do to protect our earth? And then as you get older, it gets um, more explicit about energy efficiency um, measures that you can take at home. And then with the older kids, it's all curriculum like So it's whatever they're learning in the classroom. I think that it's been um successful in in different ways so uh with the younger kids often the parents are in the room and um engaging with the the children and then with the older kids it's taking on that leadership role of what we call a green hero and 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 being a bit of a hero in their home and and teaching you know siblings and parents about it so it happens in different ways i don't know if you have anything to add liam yeah, I think just to add to that, uh, certainly when you're talking with younger students, you're finding that they're more receptive and going to challenge uh, our engagement officers a little bit less on their perspective or stance. And so as you get into older and older grades, uh, you see those older students starting to form their own opinions and what they'll take out of high school. One of the key resources we developed uh, this year, the start of the school year, was a green careers resource to really help those older students, uh, grades 10 through 12, envision themselves of what they could be doing uh, in the energy efficiency and environmental sustainability uh, future and what kind of careers they could be pursuing. So picking uh, at least a dozen different professionals in the region um, to really showcase what they're up to. That's great to hear. That's awesome. Um, and a question here and a Sharon has a follow-up question, actually. She's wondering, can schools or parents outside of Nova Scotia join in? Uh, so unfortunately not. It's uh, happened once or twice, but we do try to dissuade that from happening. Um, the funding for the program comes from Nova Scotians, and so where we're at, uh, a lot of the time, our EO capacity to be giving to students, uh, yeah primarily focused for Nova Scotian based students. Although if there's opportunities uh, in the future to make them nationwide or global, we're definitely happy to look at pursuing them. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any organizations in other provinces that are similar to yours or doing um, education? Yeah, so New Brunswick has the Gaia project, um, which is similar. I believe what they were doing is basically putting up on a weekly or daily basis. Um, resources right on their website that students and parents could work through together and uh, complete kind of that task activity based tasks uh, on a day to day basis. And then we do have a question if anyone knows of any um, programs that exist in BC. I personally don't. Um, but if anyone on the call today does feel free to, to jump in in the Q&A or in the chat box and, and type in. At any point. <laughs> There's also resources on our website and on YouTube that you are happy, like we're happy to share with everybody. So if you Google um, or go to our website, even um, green school, uh, ns.ca, you'll be able to find the resources and then also YouTube videos, which are like mini bite sized pieces of our webinars. That's awesome. That's uh, very helpful. I know I've shared them um, on my personal Facebook and just put in big bold letters like friends with kids. <laughs> yeah. Go to this and they found it really helpful because um, there's there's so many activities. I know Liam, I constantly talk about this is the draft snake 
that you can make and it's taking an old sweater and then um, cutting the arm off and filling it with the rest of the sweater and you make a snake out of it that you can put at the bottom of your door for drafts which i think is just so cute um if your seven -year -old handy. Daughter doesn't like snakes mermaids work exceptionally well for them as well <laughs> that is a helpful tip that's good yeah. that's good to know um, and then I think uh, Yasmin from um, Cambo had a, a question here. She goes, yeah. well, she does a comment. She does say, I think both utilities, BC Hydro and Fortis BC, have school programs. Um, however, she's not sure if they've been pivoted online. So I will follow up on that to find out and we'll share on all social media. Um, there is a question here, though. Um, what is the difference between Zoom and Google Meets? I know the difference, but is there a difference for your in the programming? Um, so for us, the reason why we went with Google Meet, so it's the same, there's not much difference. Um, uh, we could have done the program on Zoom for sure. Uh, for us, the schools were already familiar with the Google platform. They use Google for classes, I think from grade six, grade six up. So they have something called Google Classroom. And so we figured it would be the easiest way to transition. It also is how we have done it historically. So it was less of a learning curve for us internally as well. That's good. That's good to know. And then just in case the question is, is the difference between uh, Zoom and Google Meets, it's just different platforms, the same as like yeah. using Firefox yeah. or Explorer or Chrome. Um, so that kind of thing. The other benefit is that I haven't heard of any Google bombing, Google Meets bombing happening versus Zoom bombing, which would <laughs> not be great to happen when you have kids there. <laughs> Um, another question is, uh, are the webinars scheduled at certain times or they can, can they be viewed at the convenience of the student? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, we, I will start off by saying we are a very flexible program. So we're here to um, engage with students and make it e as easy as possible. Um, that being said, we do have set up webinar times. Um, so you can go on and register with a scheduled time. But we've had instances where people have emailed us and said, oh no, I can't make that one anymore. And we sort of end up coming up with this other cluster of people who couldn't make it and we make a time that works for them. Um, so, but really we set up that booking page to keep it as um, structured as we could for, to make it easy for parents. It wasn't back and forth emailing and such. Yeah, the team's been great at accommodating uh, those requests and then the addition of having all of our resources online for free for parents to and teachers to go to and just download as they like uh, through greenschoolsns.ca has been a big help as well. And those are not protected for no discussion only households. Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're great resources, not just for parents, but for teachers, like you mentioned. Um, so if anyone has any uh, family or friends that are teachers, definitely share those resources with them because um, you know, the more students that we get uh, learning about energy efficiency, the better off we all are. <laughs> well, soon be, I was talking to my colleague, we have two um, summer interns with us that are master students right now, and I was explaining that growing up, um, we learned about recycling, like the reduce, reuse, recycle when I was going to school. And that was just something that was like new. And we told our parents about it. Like, you don't put that uh, pop can in the garbage. That's not what you do. So <laughs> kind of the same thing, uh, what Piper did with her mom um, about uh, or her dad about closing the, the curtain or having the curtains open and the lights off. So it's nice yeah. to see maybe when, uh, when she's our age, when she's in her forties, she will, uh, <laughs> she'll be telling stories like that. Uh, I have another question here actually from Yasmin as well. She's, um, you touched on this a little bit. She's curious if you've been able to track any uptake in efficiency Nova Scotia programs as a result of the school education. So for example, kids going home and uh, suggesting a program participation. Yeah, so there's been, uh, I can take the first stab and Kelsey add on if you like. Uh, about two years ago, Efficiency Nova Scotia put the focus on what that action for students to take um, was really getting parents, foot, uh, parents participating in the Efficient Product uh, direct install program that Efficiency runs. So the free products in your home replacing inefficient products. And so one of the things that our engagement officers started handing out were these 100% off coupons for students to take home, give to their parents, and book participation into that program. So while we don't, uh, at Green Schools, track the number of those referrals for 
the counties that we do run the programs in, um, we do ask, how did you hear about the program? And that 100% off coupon is one of the ways that efficiency is tracking kind of that initial reach and that first way to get uh, their message through the door to install free products and then what are the next actions that those homeowners could be taking. So having an energy audit performed on the home all the way to installing solar PV on the roof. One of the other pieces that we have at the end of the year as well is a teacher survey with I think 12 or 15 questions. And on there, uh, a couple of the benefits for Efficiency Nova Scotia is asking them if they recall who the program funder was, um, who the voice for energy efficiency in the province is. And so those marks always score high and they've just been going higher year over year of having that brand recognition by teachers uh, within the classroom. Okay, last question is, I'm just wondering if you had, um, both of you, if you had one thing to say to the, the group right now, um, what would it be? Oh, don't be afraid to dream big. Like this is the time where you can have time to yourself to focus on what you want to be doing, um, either as your organization, as your business, look at where you're at today and certainly have that Band-Aid solution to get you through the next little bit. But take the time for that reflection, putting time into the projects and programs that you'd really love to be delivering and find a way to come out of this unusual, uh, unpredictable future in the place that you'd really want to be. Don't be afraid to try things. We, we're we really happy that we tried this. <laughs> so I think um, sometimes it's hard to imagine a solution that you that will work and but if you, if you try things, you, you learn along the way. So uh, we're happy that we, we went for it. Those are some great, uh, great insights there. I know um, I always say I fail at least once a day. <laughs> uh, if you're not failing, you're not learning, right? Um, so thank you, Kelsey and Liam, for giving a, an excellent and insightful presentation. And thank you for the work that you're doing to engage our youth in Nova Scotia and uh, beyond through your online platforms. Um, so thank you again to everyone as well for a great discussion. I'm um, sure our listeners would agree that this is a very insightful presentation. I hope you can join me next Friday along with um, Efficiency Canada's Executive Director, Corey Diamond, who is actually gonna give an update on energy efficiency's role in Canada's economic recovery, um, including an overview of the conversations that our team is having across Canada, as well as what we're hearing in Ottawa. Uh, so along with those uh, uncertain times right now with the conversations so, Ed, that we're having and, and hopefully glimpse a little bit into the crystal ball of to what we're, we're saying. Um, we'll see. So I hope you can join us and have a great weekend, everyone. Mm -hmm.